The Eureka House, located between the Mocha River and the nearby mountain, calls to mind the atmosphere of the Creole and colonial homes from that period. Built entirely of wood from the island, it was constructed shortly before the arrival of the English in 1810. Several generations of Leclesios shaped and transformed the spectacular home. The famous dodo bird, the large pigeon-like fowl which still lived at the time of the Dutch occupation, is now extinct, though it remains the national symbol of Mauritius Island. The no less famous dodo ball is held once a year and reunites Mauritian high society. The breathtaking Pamplemousse Botanical Garden allows the visitor to become familiar with the countless varieties of plants which either came from or were brought to this island. Governor Mahé de la Bourdonnée had his home built on this airy hillside. Later, the famous botanist Pierre Poivre would live here and carry out his duties as island steward. Pierre Poivre succeeded, after several attempts, to make off with valuable plants from the Malouk Islands, plants which were treasured throughout the world for the spices they provided. In 1772, the nutmeg and clove plants were the pride of the gardens. Though the most well-known plants of the royal gardens are probably the giant water lilies, the Victoria Regia, hundreds of other varieties of plants are displayed here as well. Papyrus, banyan trees, clove plants, giant tallypots, and a strange kind of palm tree, which is said to die after blooming only a single time at the age of 100. The Pamplemousse Gardens are to this day one of the most beautiful botanical gardens in the world. Mauritius, which became independent in 1968, and a republic on March 12, 1992, seems among all the islands in the Indian Ocean, the one most resolutely turned toward the future. The national holiday, which is held March 12th of each year, is the perfect time to see the young people of the diverse cultural backgrounds assembled. Indians make up over one-third of the total population. They arrived in droves during English colonization to work in the sugarcane fields. Deeply devoted to their religion, they continue to celebrate all the traditional Indian holidays here on Mauritius. Maha Shivaratri is the largest Hindu holiday celebrated on the island. Every year in February or March, thousands of men and women, young and old alike, from throughout the island parade in their white outfits with kanwar on their shoulders. For up to three days, they gather at the sacred Ganja Talao Lake, which is also known as Grand Bassin. There, the pilgrims enter the water up to their ankles and pray, then sprinkle water on the Shivalinga to alleviate the god's suffering. They also offer fruit and coconuts to the divinities. The preparations for this celebration often last up to two weeks. On their way back from the lake, they spend a day in the temples, praising the glory of Shiva. Throughout the Hindu year, other holidays are celebrated, such as Diwali, the celebration of light, or Holi, the celebration of fire and colors. Anglicans, Presbyterians, and Roman Catholics all live in harmony here, each freely practicing their respective beliefs. This red-roofed church of Cap Malheureux is located on the northern tip of the island, where the British troops landed in force after several unsuccessful attempts. They would remain on Mauritius for 150 years. In the Act of Capitulation of December 3, 1810, it was specified that all properties would be respected and that the inhabitants would be able to continue practicing their religions, their laws, and their customs. Mm -hmm. 